on today's episode of the Cryptoverse. I'm going to walk you through exactly where we are with the whole Bitcoin forking situation and show you how to read the data for yourself whenever you want. So all of that coming up on today's episode of the Cryptoverse, so stay right there. Hi there guys, welcome to the latest episode of the Cryptoverse, your regular dose of news and commentary on Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains. I'm your host, Chris Coney, the founder of Cryptoversity.com, the online school where you can learn about Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains. And of course you can find out more at Cryptoversity.com. So you've tuned into the news and commentary show of the Cryptoverse. Today I want to talk about exactly where we are in terms of the Bitcoin scaling debate and the countdown. So as you probably know, you probably all know this already, the stalemate on what upgrades should be applied to the Bitcoin network has been going on for like the last couple of years and it's coming to a head. Now the main reason it's coming to a head is this. Let me show you it, there it is. You see this here countdown? Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see it says UASF BIP 148 countdown. So this is the reason why it's coming to a head. This is a countdown timer for the UASF or the user activated soft fork. And this timer shows when it's gonna happen. Now this is a group of Bitcoin node operators that are sick and tired of waiting for the Bitcoin miners to support segregated witness or SegWit, which is one of the upgrades, right? And they've announced that on the 1st of August, they will start rejecting any transaction that does not support SegWit. So these people really want SegWit to be activated, like really, really want it activated on the Bitcoin network, right? And they're willing to do it forcibly if they have to. Now then, if the 1st of August does come and SegWit has not been adopted, these people are going to split off a new version of Bitcoin with all their supporters and then leave everyone else on the existing version of Bitcoin. Meaning, as long as both versions continue to be maintained, we will have two Bitcoins, just like there are two Ethereums, right? Now, if, say, you have five Bitcoins in your own private wallet and you've made a copy of your recovery phrase and you've put that somewhere safe, then your Bitcoins are perfectly safe. But the Bitcoin must be in your own private wallet, not on an exchange and not deposited with any third party. Because as long as you have control of your own Bitcoin, if that split happens, you'll end up with five Bitcoins on each of the versions. And that's because your private key will work on both versions of the Bitcoin network because they work in almost identical ways and that key will unlock both of them. So what you would do is in that situation is wait, it would be the best thing to do. It would be to wait and see if both versions of the Bitcoin network are going to survive, right? There's every chance that enough, there is every chance that enough people will give up on one of the versions and join the other team. And then if that happens, the weaker version of the Bitcoin network will just die off. And that will then leave us with, once again, a single Bitcoin network. Now you would, if that happened and the weaker version of the Bitcoin network died off, you would now be back to your original five Bitcoins because the other five just died with the other version of the Bitcoin network, right? So it splits and your Bitcoin gets copied into two different versions. If one of them dies off, you're back to square one, right? And this, with one of the chains potentially dying off, that's why you should not be sending or receiving any transactions on either versions of the Bitcoin network until we are sure they're both gonna survive, which is another possibility as we've seen with Ethereum. Both of the Ethereums are doing just fine and they've been going for the long term now. 
So let's now switch gears. What I've just said there is what happens if the countdown I just showed you reaches zero and SegWit has not been adopted. If that countdown reaches zero and SegWit is adopted, then that group of people have got exactly what they wanted. Everyone will have joined them ahead of schedule. So in that case, we would still get an upgraded Bitcoin, except since everyone has agreed to the upgrade at the same time, there's no need for a split, is there? Now, if this is the way it goes, very few people will notice it. Like when SegWit activated on Litecoin, it went very smoothly and Litecoin has been humming along ever since. So that's some context. The question is, where are we at right now? Well, the next thing we need to see to avoid a split is the activation of this BIP, uh, BIP 91. BIP is Bitcoin Improvement Proposal, and they're all numbered. And which is why on this site, which is xbt.eu, we have a number of stats. Now, the BIP 91, it reduces the number of miners that are required in order for this SegWit proposal to get activated. Previously, it required 95% of all mining power to support it, but BIP91 is saying, let's lower the threshold to 80%, so it makes it easier to hit. Now, the first deadline for this, a BIP91, it's already been missed, but there are several more chances left before the 1st of August, so no need to panic. So let's have a look at these other charts here. Um, we can see this sort of, what is it, a pie chart, should we call it? Yeah, I think it's, I think that's reasonable to say, like a donut. Let me scroll down a little bit, but put it right in the front and center here. So looking at this other chart, this orange part of the ring, which I think you can click on and pull it out. If you click on it here, look, it'll pull out like that. Well, that makes much of a difference, but anyway. The orange part of the ring shows the percentage of total mining power that supports BIP91. Now, if that is above 80% at the start of a what we call a lock-in period, and if it stays there, well, then BIP91 will lock in. But it has to be 80% of the total um, lock-in period has to signal for BIP91. So right at this minute, it's showing 80.5%, is it? Something like that. So 80.5% of mining power is supporting BIP91. That's good news. So the bar chart just down here, that shows the status of the current lock-in period, and it updates every 10 minutes or so. So you can come to this page anytime you want and just refresh it, and you will see the latest figures for yourself. So this can actually succeed or fail before the end of a lock-in period. Say if, for example, right now, it's, it's displaying, it says, 283 blocks before the current lock-in period ends. So that's 336 blocks in total for that whole white bar. And you can see the blue area is how many blocks so far have signaled for BIP91. So we need 269, I think it is. We need 269 blocks to signal for BIP91 out of 336 total which is 80% for it to lock in. But it has to happen within that block of 336. If not, it starts again. So it's this is great because it says we still need 225 blocks to signal for BIP91 within this activation period, this lock-in period, for BIP91 to lock in. It's okay though, we have 283 blocks to go. So there's still enough um, blocks available for it to activate. But this is the point I was going to make. This can succeed or fail before the end of the period. Say, for example, if the next 100 blocks fails to signal BIP91, then there just wouldn't be enough blocks left in this lock-in period to reach the threshold of you know, 269. By the same token, if we started a brand new activation period and the first 169 blocks back to back signaled for BIP91, well, then we would have locked in and there would still be 69 blocks to go and it wouldn't matter what happened with those other 69 blocks because we'd already got the 80% threshold, right? So 336 uh, blocks, it, it, I think it works out like 2.3 days. I've just got 
I've actually got the BIP91 proposal up on my other screen here. And um, that's where I got these numbers from. So we're just looking here, yes, 80%. It's 269 block activation out of a 336 block window. Yes, so I am, I am correct in my numbers there. So that's it. There's, there is more, but I don't want to overcomplicate it with too many possibilities. So for now, let's just focus on the next goal. To avoid a split, we need, the very next thing we need to do is to lock in BIP91, which means getting 269 blocks out of 336 blocks to signal for it. And that site I just showed you, which will be linked in the show notes, will help us keep track of that. So keep an eye on the stats over the next 24 hours, and I'll be back tomorrow to check in and give you some updates. So that is how we can avoid a split. There's still time before the 1st of August, so fingers crossed that it all goes well and all the drama was for nothing. All right, so thank you very much for joining me today, guys. If you like this episode, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you're new, subscribe to the channel. And if you want to get access to my best stuff, check out cryptoversity.com. All right, that's all for today, guys. I'll be back tomorrow with another edition of the Market Roundup and another edition of the News and Commentary Show. So until then, it's me, Chris Coney, saying bye for now.